everyone. Welcome. It's Amanda Grace. I'm here with you. I'm sorry if we're a little blurry. We are trying to get the internet worked out here and we have to have some cable lines put down as well. So you may see me over at the other house a lot, but I had no aid here for Chris. So I did not want to leave him. So you probably will hear me fine. You may see me a little blurry, but you'll hear me fine. The birds are in back of me. Welcome everybody. Um, yes, bear with us. We are going to get these put in. It may take a few weeks or so, but just bear with us. We'll have the cable lines in and it shouldn't be an issue. So blessings to everybody. I have my shofar here with me. I think my prayer shawl is actually downstairs. My shofar is here. There it is. There's the, there's the little band. And Toby, let's see. There's Toby in back of me hanging out for this broadcast. So we have a special guest with us. Hello in the Netherlands. Welcome and hello to everybody that's coming on tonight to watch. We have a special guest with us. I'm going to bring him on in a few minutes. Jonah is here with us so we can do a deep dive into the book of Esther being that Purim just happened. So hope our Jewish brothers and sisters out there had a happy Purim. The time between Purim and Passover this year is going to be like any other time. I'm telling you, there is going to be so many shakings and twists and turns. And there's a tipping point that's about to happen that I've been talking about also on Greats and Glory for a while. So let's pray. And then I will bring him on. So Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, we come before you. We praise you, your almighty God, that you are high and lifted up. You are far above every power, principality, and might. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise through your name. We humble ourselves before you, Lord. Let us become less so you become more in our lives. Acknowledging your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, was the word became flesh into the earth, birthed into the earth and dwelt among us and was the spotless Passover lamb and came to die for our sins and willingly died on a cross, a brutal death at Calvary to purchase us back to you, Lord. We praise you. He rose again in three days. He ascended back into heaven and he rules and reigns at your right hand forevermore, Lord. And we honor that before you. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we invite your presence to the presence of the Holy Spirit to fill this place, Father God, to saturate the atmosphere with your glory. Let your presence move, lead and guide us in all wisdom, Father God. Counsel my power and the reverential fear of the Lord by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God. May only the truth and power of almighty God with authority come forth in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, every plot, scheme, contract, assignment, harm, slander, weaponry, blueprint, attack, strategy, that the enemy, satanic agents, dark forces, unclean spirits, Puppets and agents of the enemy, the corrupt and the like, would attempt be bled, it be broken, canceled, aborted, destroyed, dismantled, disabled, nullified, disarmed, and voided, Lord. And in the name of Jesus Christ, let it be bound up and cast back to the dry places and pits and places from which it came from, to be bound there in the name of Jesus Christ, and did not return nor have anything sent to this place. For you say, Lord, what is bound in heaven is bound on earth, Father God. You say what we bind on earth is bound in heaven, what we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Lord, take all the glory for yourself. You are the potter. We are the clay. You are the author and finisher of our faith. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We are created beings to glorify you. Without your breath of life in us, we are dust. That's all we are. We don't have life. So we give you all the praise for that today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 Okay, right before I bring Joan on, you know, I like to put these up at the beginning and the end. So... If you go to MyPillow.com and use promo code ARC, you could save up to 66% off of all my pillow products. They are so much more than just pillows. We have actually a lot of my pillow dog beds all over the house. Uh, their slippers are wonderful as well. So uh, we like to put this up for everybody because we know a lot of people like to go there and take a look around. So tonight we are doing a deep dive into the book of Esther uh, Jonah was explaining some of this to me the other night, and so I'm going to bring him on now so we can have a discussion about this, and hopefully uh, you guys learn some things you've never learned before. That is the whole point of this. So I'm going to bring Jonah on right now, and there he is. Shalom, shalom. Hello, hello. Shalom, and I'm going to tell everybody again, uh, the connection may get a little fuzzy at times. You will be able to hear us just fine. There, do, We have to do many things with the internet here, so please uh, just bear with us for that. But you'll be able to hear us fine. 
Like you're clear to me, Jonah. Good. Good. Like I can see you, you, so that's good. I think it's the upload speed from my side, and and the fact that your satellite isn't uploading as as fast. But that'll get taken care of when you get your cable. Yes. Yes. So it patience. Will. We have to have patience. Yes, we're working on it. We are working on it, and uh, being that Purim just happened, this is the perfect time to do this for everybody. Yeah, I. I'm thrilled that you, you know, kind of spontaneously um, allowed for this. I, uh, I've been thinking a lot about Purim and, you know, it's been um, lightning for me. Uh, of course, uh, for me as a Jew, I've been, been experiencing Purim all my life. It was, you know, like dressed up as a child. Uh, I remember religious school and Hebrew school. Purim was always, you know, a fun celebration. And uh, I've been living it, you know, I've been in Purim Spiels, which is a play. I've been in several Purim Spiels as uh, as temple officer, as a member. And uh, so it's, you know, I've lived Purim for 60 years. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, uh, in 2019, era of 9-11, 2019, uh, I, you know, kind of had a really powerful experience, as any born-again person knows um, with what that's like when you kind of have the Holy Spirit come to you. And, and it's, it's been interesting how this, this teacher, the Holy Spirit, this guide, has comforted me in... In, in a very difficult journey uh, that started, frankly, with you um, at uh, uh, John 316, you know, the day I walked in there, mm -hmm. um, uh, scared, scared is very, very, not scared, but very confused and very traumatized because I think about the hardest thing for uh, to do is for a Jew to accept Jesus, to accept Yeshua yeah. HaMashiach. It is, it is. a profoundly difficult thing to do and the likelihood is you'll turn back i mean the, the 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 likelihood is you'll you'll be intimidated by loss of family loss of friends and all the other confusion in your life and your identity and so i think it's a very it's a very daunting and it's so i always say it's it's no different than it was thousands of years ago uh when his you know earliest disciples and followers um, because he came first for the Jew, and those Jews, um, you know, knew what it was like to make that decision. So, mm -hmm. when you, when you, um, but you don't have to be a Jew to be born again, as you know. By the way, you got clearer, uh, which is good since well, you have yeah, such a since you're so be, pretty. You know, it's good have, to see you. We have some very expensive routers here that actually bump up. They work. They kind of get more. If the signal tries to go down, they bump it back up. So. It helps. Okay, so when you when you're born again, whether you're Gentile, Jew, most likely Christian, um, you know, and you receive uh, a start a real strong relationship with with God, uh, the Godhead, mm -hmm. and um, start to um, activate a discussion with. Uh, with God in a new, in a new way, and as a born again in your heart, being in Jesus, uh, Jesus in your heart, um, you see things you don't see otherwise. Um, you talk about this all the time on your show, and uh, um, you know people try to figure out what's going on in our crazy country, and uh, mm -hmm. frankly, cannot really understand it in the natural. Uh, now I know that you talk about all that time, all the time, so I'm not going to quite go there, but but I want to bring this back to Purim because uh, as I say, when you start to, when you're born again, or when you're looking at the stories in the old Testament uh, and the Tanakh and what you have, you know, you have the Torah, you have the uh, Naveen, the, 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 the prophets, and you have the Kedavim, which is the writings. Um, and the, and the book of Esther falls into the, into the writings. It's there with Ruth and mm -hmm. Esther, I mean, excuse me, Ruth and uh, Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon and Lamentations, uh, Ezra, Nehemiah, uh, and of course, Daniel. And it's interesting because uh, the book of uh, Esther takes place in Susa, 
in Susan, mm-hmm. in, in, the, in, the, in the Citadel, in the place where Daniel was. I mean, this it's is- It's in Persia. Is, Basically, is, it takes place in Persia. In the city. I mean, um, yep. when, when, uh, when Esther's, the king's gonna have three feasts. Um, there's gonna be three feasts in this story. One is a 180 day feast. And I think that 180 is always a nice number. Um, and that's for everybody to kind of show off his wealth and kind of a yes. kind of yes. a, a conference uh, uh, for 127 it's provinces. A conference, but it was to show himself off. Yeah, absolutely. You got you got to send yeah. these guys back, and you know, yeah, we're in the right. We're we're part of the right team here. You know, we're playing for the right team. So now it's interesting. One hundred and twenty-seven provinces, and um, Proverbs one twenty-seven is an interesting proverb, but also Miriam lives one hundred and twenty-seven years. So that number one twenty-seven kind of ties in nicely. But um, uh, in in the uh, in the story, it it, it the the, the the second feast is a seven-day feast uh, that's specifically for this for Shusan for the citadel, and uh, that's a seven-day feast, and it's on you know it's on the seventh day of the seven-day feast that uh, the king Hashuera summons Vashti uh, to do her Queen Vashti, who to, to the, do her who dance. The queen of Esther. Yes, he wants to show her beauty off and basically right. show her off. Uh, before all the people that were there at this right, and this and I find it interesting. Yeah, I find it interesting that you know feminists get feminists get their you know get a little uptight about this and 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 you know yeah go Vashti and at my temple my la- my rabbi at the time I was in a perm spiel she was a I'll say an uber feminist uh, the sort of the third wave feminist and she pl- she loved playing Vashti um, but you know there's there's uh, there are scriptures about respecting authority and respecting your husband. And, um, yeah. you know, in some ways she represents kind of the problem in society today. And let's face mm-hmm. it, you know, uh, men show off their strength through athletic competitions and, you know, and women do things in, in with beauty. That's not so odd then it's not so odd now nobody seems to have a problem with cheerleaders at a at a sporting event you know i mean so come on it's it's uh what's 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 not so surprising is that he wants her to display her her beauty what's wrong with beauty god gave us beauty uh what what's what's wrong is that she disobeys uh her husband at this very critical moment he refuses okay? to come he yes. totally refuses to come right she and she's vanished she says, "Take a message. I'm not That's coming." That's right. That's right. And, she and she's vanished. vanished. Now, I I want to mm-hmm. tell you that there's some, um, you know, for me when I look at these old stories, now I look at them through the eye of who's who, in a prophetic sort of symbology yeah. or shadow kind of way. As we know, yeah. in the Old Testament, it's concealed. In the New oh. Testament, it's revealed, right? So there yeah. are those that think if you're looking for the typology in Esther, you might say that the King Hoshuerus is the God figure. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he's God. Please don't chat that freaking out stuff over that. Just the archetypes, the shadows, okay? He, he would be the God image. Uh, Queen Vashti would be the rejecting Jews, the Jews that disobeyed. Uh, God. Yeah. Um, the Magi, the wise men, um, uh, the wise men who understood the times, they in, in the story, they're literally described that way, would be the Magi. Now, keep in mind, the Magi were the same ones in that knew from Daniel when the Savior would come, when he would be born, and to look for a yes. star. And isn't it interesting yeah. that Esther's name means it's star? star. Okay. Esther, now, but, Hadassah... Right. I have all the names, you know. I looked them up. Well, Hadassah is, is her Jewish name, and that means yeah. myrtle. Now, myrtle is a very yeah. interesting uh, plant or tree in the Bible. It has really great symbology uh, and applies in really interesting ways. But but Hadassah, is, her name is chained to Esther, which is star, and it comes from the root of a word that means to conceal or hidden. Okay, now Vashti is interesting. Her name comes from beautiful and a verb of drinking. In other words, uh, sort of beautiful, beautiful display with drunken men is sort of the image of Vashti. So isn't it ironic that she doesn't want to display her beauty, 
with men who are drinking, even though her name is a, is symbolic and or an etymology etymology um, of that. So it's 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 yeah. an interesting paradox there. Um, so uh, you have the Haggai, which uh, I'm going to give you some word plays too. Uh, Haggai would be the Holy Spirit in the character if we're in the story. If we're staying with this typology, Mordechai could be the believing Jews, or some say the Christ figure. Um, Esther could be the church. You have a marriage there. And uh, and Haman, of course, lucky guess, anyone? You know, da -da, drum roll, it's going to be it's gonna be the Antichrist, right? Or Satan, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, there are just a lot of cool elements going on in the story. Now, it's a, it's a, it's got 10 chapters, I believe. It's a heck of a book. So, so there's a lot to get through. We won't get through anywhere as near. I'll, we'll have to just sort of cut off at some point because I'm never going to get through okay. my notes. Okay. But where does the name Purim come from? So Pur is, is lot, is, is like dice. Think of it as dice. Okay. Yeah. Lot. Mm -hmm. Purim, because you would, lots, plural, right? you, right, you would pluralize Pur yeah. die to dice with Purim. That would make it plural. You add the eem to make it plural, okay? So yeah, casting lots. Now we have the story. I'm here, Jonah. Casting lots in the book of Jonah has a connotation too. The lots fell on Jonah. Oh, surprise, surprise that the lots fell on Jonah, right? And surprise, surprise that the lots fell um, on the thirteenth of Adar. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump around a little bit, folks. So try to. Uh, hold on to your seats here, because uh, where is the first mention of Purim? Oh, excuse me, of 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 Purim in in the Bible. Where is the first? It's it's really the first mention is in in Maccabees two. Um, what Hanukkah? Which is in the Sefer. So let's yeah, let's clarify for everybody. There is something called a Sefer. It has all the or Sefer. It has all the books, like the Book of Wisdom, Jubilee the Maccabees. So it's got all of these books, Enoch, that were taken out of basically the 1611 King James Bible. When it was put together, those books were in there because I have a 1611 Bible that somebody gifted me. So I know they were in there. They were then yep. separated and now you find them in the Sefer. So we all accept Hanukkah as a, as a holiday, of course. There's no controversy there. But what's interesting is the story that we read about Hanukkah is really not the story that's in Maccabees. Okay. It, yeah. It's in fact, it was written yeah, hundreds of not. Different. When yeah. you were on, so, you went over this. When you were yeah. on one of the last times you we went did. over this. We did, which is why I think it's kind of cool that we come back again. Because in, um, in the story of Hanukkah, and this is true whether it's book one or two, in the story of Hanukkah, you have, of course, Judah Maccabee or Judas Maccabee. Don't confuse him with Judas or Judah from, you know, the, the betrayal of, of Jesus, of course. But um, uh, so so Judah Maccabee, uh, otherwise referred to as the hammer, uh, the Maccabean, uh, the hammer, um, he – uh, he he fights these um, amazing against all odds battles, and in a way, Hanukkah is is like Purim in the sense that there's a great victory, and it's a great victory against all odds. Now, in Hanukkah, we're, we're, there's a battle uh, with a great general called Nicanor, and um, um, Judah Maccabee um, slays him, cuts off his head, and hangs it on the citadel. Oh, hangs it on the mm -hmm. on the temple. I think the temple walls. Okay, to me, it's a little bit like David and Goliath, because the odds of him accomplishing this in that battle, if you'd read the battle story, and even I think at West Point, they think they even study a little bit about the Maccabees because they were great guerrilla battle tactics. Um, you know, the odds are tremendously negative uh, that they would win these battles, uh, and that began the Hasmonean period, which was a really a great period of unification. Yeah unity in 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 in, uh, in Israel and great prosperity but it also led to a treaty with Rome and that's how we got the Romans in the picture and of course we know what the Romans did uh, we won't go there but back to that battle Judah said something very interesting and this is the first mention of Purim because it's mentioned as this way he says remember the 13th of Adar and Nicanor day, and Mordechai day remember Mordechai Day. What's Mordechai Day? Purim. Now, what's the 13th of Adar? Okay, when 
Haman cast lots. Yes, it fell on he, this. Yes. It, on the first month of the year, he picked a date, which turned out to be 11 months later. So for the Jews knew for 11 months that they were going to be, you know, they were going to be wiped out. Imagine that. You know, you're, but you're given 11 months to prepare, but how do you prepare? You, you know, so the king is have this decree to wipe you out. You, 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 you you're there. There were in sackcloth and ashes, and they were feeling really lousy because they saw their end coming at the hands of Amalek, which we're going to be talking about too. So, isn't it interesting that Haman cast lots? They fall on the 13th of Adar, which was the day he was going to wipe out the Jews. And what happens, of yes. course, we know in the Purim story, there's this divine reversal. And the whole story is filled with divine reversals. And on that divine reversal day, the king issues a new decree that the Jews can fight back. And it's they're victorious, of course. And um, Esther, meanwhile, is fasting. And, and so here yes, we are with, 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 with this incredible turn of events on the same day that was the battle in Maccabees that he says, remember that date. These are different people, different time, different battles. Okay. Remember the 13th of Adar. And we're remembering the 13th of Adar is the day that Haman cast lots for. And of course, you know, they're, they're victorious in both cases, but remember Mordecai day. So clearly in the book of Maccabees at the time of the Maccabees in 160 ish BC, uh, they know about Purim. They know about they know about uh, the the events of, of of Purim. Okay, now in the Bible we know there's no coincidences and there's no word for coincidences. Okay, so um, I'll just say this in Proverbs sixteen thirty four it says the lot is cast into the lap, but it is every but its every decision is from the Lord. Okay, so that's Proverbs sixteen thirty four. Okay, a, a a book of 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 wise thought, wise wisdom here. But the lot is cast in the lap, but every decision is from the Lord. So we have this illusion of chance, but we have this really amazing set of events that couldn't be chance. There's just too many, um, too many things going mm -hmm. on. OK, so right. as I said, uh, a lot is hidden. OK, a lot is hidden in the book of Esther. But in Proverbs 25, 2, it says, is the glory of Elohim to conceal a matter. But the glory of kings is to search out a matter. Again, is the glory Amen. of Elohim, search the glory of God to conceal. Yeah, and we do that all the time to conceal a matter. But the glory of kings is to search out a matter. Okay. Yeah. Now Esther, as we this said, is what we're doing is, tonight. We're searching out the matter. And and so you have Esther, this book, which is a sort of about the, the lots, the chance, that kings, and we have to search it out. So I've been searching and searching for a couple of weeks on this book of uh, of um, uh, of Esther. Now, right off the bat, there's an interesting um, if, uh, set of facts. Um, Esther one. So. Uh, Esther 1, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. This is the Hebrew for Esther 1, okay? I don't expect anybody to read it or see it okay. particularly. But what I want you to understand is what I'm going to tell you about here. So I'm going to turn it around so I can see it. But I'm going to speak. So what you have here are the letters up above, okay? All the letters have been combined together. And then down below, they're listed again, okay? They're broken back out, okay? So what do they mean in Esther 1? Yeah. You have... Um, you have the first word is Yah, first letters for Yah. And then you have, um, so you have God, Yah being God, right? Jehovah, some people say. Okay, so then you have um, a set of other letters, okay? And, you know, when you're trying to decipher the, the Bible, if you're trying to decipher Hebrew, a lot of times people will use gematria as a way of figuring something out, looking for a sign. So if you take... Um, the, this next set of letters, trying to make it work here, you take this next set of letters and you do the numeric equivalent of each letter, okay? What you get is 386. What is 386? That's the number for Yeshua, 
Okay, Jesus. Wow. But if you take so the if next, you take the name Yeshua and you do the Gematria, it comes out to three eighty six also. Yes, in, in Esther one. So right out of the gate is God, Jesus, or Yeshua three eighty six, and then fourteen eighty. And what does that stand for? Messiah. That's for the uh, the Christ. That's the Greek uh, the, the Greek Christ too. That is uh, fourteen eighty. So right out of the bat, you have God, Yeshua, Messiah, in the in the in the letters of 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 Esther of of the book of Esther number one. What are the odds of that? Right now, you have. I already Bible. said. To, I already said to you before that. Um, that that uh, uh, it says in in Esther one in uh, chapter number two in those days as King Hashuerus, a lot of people have trouble saying it Hashuerus, also known as Xerxes in 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 the in the in the Greek, um, sat on his royal throne, which was at the citadel of Susa. If you go to Daniel a two, I looked it in a vision while at, while I was looking, I was in the citadel of Susa. So Daniel's having a vision of Susa. King Hashuerus yes. is in the citadel of Susa. Okay. Um, and there you go. Another kind of divine little coincidence, right? Um, Esther 3, okay. Esther 1-3, um, in the third year of his reign, three is always a good number, he gave a banquet for all his princes and attendants. Mm -hmm. The army officers of Persia and Media, the nobles, the princes in his provinces, being in his presence. Okay, there, if you take every eighth letter, and a lot of times God, as a literary technique, uh, you'll see a costrix. You'll see, you know, a letter from each word, right? Sometimes it's the beginning okay. of the of the verse. Sometimes it's spaced out. There's a lot of spacing out in in Purim in the Book of Esther, and here you have Moshiach, every eighth letter. If you take that verse, every eighth letter throughout, it's going to spell out Mashiach. Wow. Okay. Um, when That's the days amazing. were completed, he gave a banquet lasting seven days for all the people present in the city. Okay. And I just find the imagery in six of fine white and violet uh, held by cords of fine purple linen. Uh, so mm -hmm. I just see a lot of symbols of like the ancient temple uh, there. Okay. So yes. another little coincidence, uh, I, I'm going to also try to find some time to talk about some of the holiday itself, too. But um, in Esther 1-4, okay, you have, let me see here if I can, if I can try to get into the camera. In Esther 1-4, at, at that time, he displayed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the splendor of his great majesty for many days, 180 days. Okay, now... Um, you have uh, the Aleph Tov. Now, Aleph Tov is, you know, you'll say it in, Christians will tend to say the Alpha and the Omega, the yes. beginning and the end, right? Well, yes. in, in Hebrew, um, we're using the Hebrew letters, of course. There are 22 Hebrew letters. And 22 is a very big number, as I've seen. I've been seeing a lot of things with 22. Um, and on the 22nd of of uh, last year, uh, an eagle came visiting me on my front lawn. Never happened before. He was here for three days. He came back, and then he flew away from me with eagle wings out. And it was like he's like I was out on the front porch looking at him. My, my wife says he sees me. He's looking right at us. My wife says, absolutely he sees us. But anyway, um, it's uh, beginning and end. So Olive Tov. What is the what is the tal Aleph? Well, we always it, Christians will will understand the Aleph as being God. You know, it's a it's a letter that you might recognize if I show it to you right there. Okay. Aleph, yep. All right, and there's the Tav. Okay. Now I, I I don't know if I can get this up fast enough to bring this point out, but I I think it's worth deviating for one second if I can. Oh, you okay. won't see it. All right, you won't see it. Um. Anyway, if you well, were to you look up, you can share screen. You can share your screen. Oh, that's okay. I, I, we have too much to go through. But I want to point out that if you, you – each Hebrew letter is a symbol, all right? And it's a pictograph. Yes. It's a language of, fo of – of, the Hebrew letters are, are um, stories in a way. And you can almost read a word in Hebrew by mm -hmm. putting the letters together like, like Chinese characters. If you ever look at Mandarin Chinese, 
the little letters uh, are all like little symbols of a house, a person. They put it all together and it becomes a yes. word, right? Well, in Hebrew, each letter has, has a symbol. And, and ancient Hebrew, the symbol for the Aleph was the ox. And, and you'd know it. Let me see if I can yes. quickly draw it for you. Hang Aleph on. is the ox. It looks like it actually looks like an ox. This yep, letter. I'll draw, Aleph I'll is draw. the first letter, I believe, of the Hebrew alphabet as well. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Aleph that's the Aleph. Aleph. The okay. Aleph. There you go. Yes, that's like So ox. there's the head. There's the ox's horns. There's the ox's jaw, right? The, 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 the bet... Bet is the second is, letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's the second letter, and it's like a tent, right? And it's yes. a sim you, you would think of B, B, bet, and you think of B as sun, okay? Uh, because Ben, you know, think of bar mitzvah, Ben, so and so, yes. you know, I, you know, uh, Jonah Ben Amitai, okay? Jonah, yes. son of Amitai, Jonah, son of truth, okay? Uh, ben, bet, okay? Now, if you take the A, uh, you take the aleph, you turn it upside down, you've got the letter A. Yes. If you take the bet and you turn it sideways, you have the letter B, and that's where you get your alphabet, the word alphabet, aleph, bet. Yes. Okay. Now, by the way, uh, if you took the third letter, I'm not going to draw it right, but it would be a gimel. And it would look gimel, in, in, yeah. ancient, mm -hmm. in ancient times. Um, aleph, bet, gimel. Okay. It would look like, a, it would look like that. It's a, a camel. Think of think of okay. uh, uh, think of John the Baptist. What was he dressed in? Camel hair. Camel hair. Whenever you see camel in the Bible, think Holy Spirit. Camel is the Holy Spirit. So the first letter of the the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet is God. Second letter is Son. Third letter is Holy Spirit. Those are the first three Which letters. Is, Hebrew. What? Which is that's amazing. So in in the Old Testament. He's known as Ruach Elohim, Elohim, and in the New Testament, in the Greek, he's known as Ruach Hakodesh, the Holy Spirit. Well, it's a Godhead, so it's all one. But you have all in the first three letters of the of the of the Hebrew alphabet. You have you have God, Son, Holy Spirit in symbology Holy of these Spirit. letters. I could go on. The next mm -hmm. letters would be interesting too. It, it would blow your mind. But the last letter. Okay, the last letter is Tav. That's the modern, yep. today's version of a Tav. The I'll ancient version. And then Tav is the last letter. The cross. cross. That's the last letter. Now, what's so that the, letter? That's the Tav. That's the Hebrew for. That's, that's the Hebrew the Tav. tav. Okay. It's a cross. It means mm -hmm. cross sign. Okay. Now, um, so the Hebrew alphabet begins with God, and it ends with the cross isn't that interesting god is the first letter the second letter which is why this word et is such an important word in hebrew first letter last letter god and cross okay that aleph uh tav appears 74 times in the book of esther 74 times wow okay so there's oh, another, the um, the yep. Now here's, here's your, here's your, uh, point about for point earlier, Esther one I'm terrible. It's lining myself up here. Um, then the King said, then the King said to the wise men who understand the times. Okay. Um, where is he who was born? This is Matthew two, uh, one and two. Uh, two, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. So here's Esther, who is a star, and she's going to be the one who saved the Jewish people. Because they're going to be wiped out yes. if the king gets his way. Okay, kind of cool, right? Yes. All right. Now, um, uh We'll skip over. Okay, in in Esther one twenty, it says, "When the king's edict 
which he will make is heard throughout his kingdom, great as it is, then all women will give honor to their husbands, great and small. So it's kind of interesting because um, the, the, he's sort of bringing back that idea of women giving honor to their husbands, great and small. Now, right. I, I don't want to make this, you know, I don't want to make this too much about you. I don't want to, you know, make you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I think one of the things that people notice about you, I certainly do, is the respect you give your husband. You know, it, yes, it, that, I think that is that is extremely important. When I sometimes get an opportunity to give advice to people that are getting married, okay, um, what I tell women, if you really want to understand the most important thing for you as a woman, is to understand your husband's ego, his pride, and never to embarrass yes. him in public. Show him respect. No, the worst no, thing yeah, you can no, do no, for him. Yes. The worst thing you can do for a husband, worst thing a woman, a wife can do to a husband is embarrass him in public. That will create fights that can break up a marriage. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, well, but in I this say something? Can I say yeah. something quick? Yeah. So Dr. Bartlett, you know who Dr. Bartlett is, Jonah? Many people out there do. He's, he's one of I our think, dear friends. I think I've he's heard Henry his name Wagen before. He absolutely loves the Lord. Amazing doctor. Um, he said to me once, because, you know, being married – in general is not easy, but being married when you have a husband with a traumatic brain injury, you have to make adjustments. And he said to me once, which was so sweet, he goes, Amanda, just by you doing what you're doing and taking care of him and continuing with the ministry, which is what he wanted to do, you are honoring your husband. Just no by caring for him. And no, no question. And, 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 but, but you're so sensitive to his pride and, and his need to feel uh, as a man. And I see, I see this about you. I haven't seen you like I, as much as I used to, but, but I, I took special personal note of that, and I thought that was a tremendous thing. But anyway, in that particular passage, which is very important, um, the word Yahweh appears backwards beginning uh, in four consecutive words. So you have... Again, the, in a book that supposedly doesn't have the word of God, there are two books where God's name does not appear directly. Uh, I think yes. it's uh, Song Esther of Songs or and Esther's the mm -hmm. other one. OK, uh, the the other one, I think, is a lot more about love and, and, and maybe it's God, love of God or maybe it's love of women. Who knows? But the point is, I'm not talking about that book. I'm talking about this book and this book. It's quite up. Uh, quite commonly talked about that God is nowhere in the book, but he's there everywhere is in the background. Well, God's there and in, in, in the letters too. Okay. And, and here's another example of at a very, and I find that he's there in important passages. Okay. Um, now yes. uh, I want to jump ahead, jump ahead. Um, yes. And I'll explain to everybody while you're jumping ahead, why we're on satellite a, because we have to have cable lines put down B uh, Chris's aid isn't here, uh, this late. And so basically I have to be here and I can't run over to the other house without having somebody here with him. So basically this is why we're here. So I'm glad you guys can hear us and, uh, I'll keep giving updates about it, but you may see me back and forth from the other house as well until we get this all situated. Go on, Jonah. Sure. So, um, here, uh, just to be clear, in case anybody's heard that it's his wife or it's his daughter, uh, Esther is actually um, Mordechai's cousin. Uh, it was his uncle's uh, daughter. His uncle's uh, daughter. When when they when they 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 came from, uh, they were part of the uh, when they were taken as out of Babylon out of Jerusalem when the Babylonians, uh, you know. Uh, came came and took the city yeah, uh, yeah. now mm -hmm. and and uh when she had no father or mother uh mordechai took her in which would have been the right thing to do um and uh she was a woman beautiful in form and face uh and when uh, her father uh, and her mother died mordechai took her as his own daughter uh so it came about when the command and the decree of the king were heard and many young ladies were gathered to the citadel of susa into the custody of hegai I want to take, talk about him a second, that Esther was taken to the king's palace into the custody of Haggai, who was in charge of the women. So you had all these women in the harem, but there were seven yes. women. Oh, again, I always love these numbers. There were seven women that were the most special of all. I don't know why, but the most special of all. And they were given special custody or responsibility is a better word uh, for Haggai. He was 
and they had a very special place they stayed in the palace. So they were treated even better than all the other uh, women, wives of, 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 of him. Uh, so, um, so, and Haggai was this really special guy. He shows up, there's a lot of little things he does, but what about Haggai as a name? Okay, so I mentioned he's sort of the Holy Spirit character. So here's Haggai's name. Oh, there's Haggai's he's name. He's the counselor. Haggai Hi. is the counselor in this. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take uh, Hai and Yod, you have Yahweh. What's in between? Uh huh. The Gimel, the Holy Spirit, the, the symbol Gimel. of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So you have, um, you have uh, God and Holy Spirit in, in his name. Okay, uh, I think I think that's kind of interesting. Now, um, yes. when uh, when when Esther was going to be taken, uh, when it was Esther's turn to kind of go meet the king, to go you know, it's just a, like a yes. Bastion's out of the picture. Uh, you know, you almost could have started the book with uh, without her, but but nonetheless, uh, now the king's having this, you know, uh, bachelorette. Uh, uh, show and the sh bachelor show, and here he is, uh, you know, picking that out women from all bachelor over. Bachelor show, like what Oz Harris <laughs> did. That was the first bachelor. ABC didn't invent it. The first bachelor was what Oz Harris did. Of course, with as a bachelor, he probably already had you know a hundred wives, so or whatever it was. So he, I don't think he was the most. I don't think he was the most eligible bachelor, but nonetheless. Um, so he, Esther's going to be taken there. Now, ordinarily, these women would be like, deck me out. I mean, jewels and this, and right? You want to get, get picked. You want to look good, right? What does she request? Esther chapter 2, 15. Now, when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abichal, uh, the uncle of Mordechai, uh, who had taken her as his daughter, came to go into the king, she did not request anything except what Haggai, the king's eunuch, who was in charge of the woman, advised. And yes. Esther was finding favor in the eyes of all who saw her. So Esther just says, whatever Haggai says, I'm going to do what he, he tells me to do. Yes. There's that yep. Holy Spirit guiding her, right? Counselor. And, of course, He's this is the first time. Her and she he is. To listen. Great That's counselor. And and this is the first yes. time I believe when you hear that uh, Esther was finding favor in the eyes of all her saw her. Now this is an important phrase, finding favor, because in various places in the Bible, when somebody finds favor on the fifth time, it's very important. So here we have finding favor. Now, um, whereas some other examples that now God granted Daniel favor fifth time and compassion yeah. in the sight of the commander of the officials. Okay, so uh, um, in Esther 17, the king loved Esther more than all the other, and she found favor and kindness with him more than all the other virgins. Okay, mm -hmm. so once again, uh, in Samuel 1, 16, 22, Saul sent Jesse saying, let David now stand before me for he has found favor in my sight, okay? So there are other places too, but what you have, oh, Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord on the fifth time that Noah found favor. And Ruth, fifth mention of Ruth, and Ruth, the Moabite, said to Naomi, let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain after one in who his sight I might find favor. And she said to her, go, my daughter. So that's in yes. Ruth 2, 2. And this is, again, the first time, fifth time of finding favor for Ruth. So you have, uh, you have these various times where, where people find favor. Esther finds favor. Okay, uh, moving along here. Um, okay. Um, I don't know if folks know the book, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking a little bit of a, uh, of a chance here with p assuming people know the whole story, but maybe I'll get a chance to yeah. give a little bit of the, just tell the story. I'm just, I'm, I want to give you these, these 
example where God is not in the book? Well, okay. Is he in the book? Okay. Now, um, in Esther 6.13, um, then these wa his wise men and Zeresh, his wife, said to him, If Mordechai, before whom you've begun to fall, is of Jewish origin, you will not prevail over him, but will certainly yes, fall right. before him. So Esther, uh, uh, Haman's wife, Haman the bad guy, the Antichrist figure, uh, I'm going to tell you about his plot, his plan, which gets foiled. Um, it, you know, it was his wife that said to build, to hang him, Okay. She said, hang him. But later on, when the, th when the tables turned and she learned that the tables were turned, she said, you're through. If, he's, if, 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 Esther, if Mordecai and Esther of Jewish descent, forget about it. So this is the covenant. Now, and this Zeresh is an important that, point. Yes. Zeresh. You know yes. what Zeresh means? No, I don't. I have it here. I'll tell you. Wait a second. It means misery, strange, or dispersed inheritance. Yeah, she was miserable at that point because what's going to happen is all the things she thought she was going to get with her husband moving up in rank are about to go down down the drain, and so um, um, and so there's a there's a you know a fatalistic kind of turn of events right there at that chapter. Um, yes, and uh, and we also have Queen Vasti replying, "If I have found favor in your." In your in your sight, this is a chapter seven. Please, King, let me be given my request and my people as my wish. Okay, what I'm going to have to do is I could give you like another and another and another and another time where God's name or thereabouts is written in the letters in these you know backwards and forwards. Uh, times now this is not a unique concept in the Bible this happens in many other books in the Bible where God's name is put there in the letters but it's very uh, prominent so there are eight verses calling for the destruction of the Jews in this book eight verses I won't go through them but there are also eight verses calling for the Jews to fight back and what you have is yes. this chiastic structure in the book you have oh, everything oh, can you explain what a chiasm is for everyone because they're in the old they're in the Old Testament a lot the chiasms yeah, so it's a very common literary technique. So imagine you have a long story, right? Okay, I'm going to use my book, Jonah, as a story example. People tend to think of the beginning and it ends. You know, you think of the end. Is that the main point? Is it the end? We don't tend to think of the main point as being in the middle, okay? Well, a lot of times, uh, the, the, you know, a key essential message in a, in a Bible story is actually – uh, pointed to chiastically, which is to say that you have, let's say you have, um, you know, starting in the beginning event, you know, something A, something happens B, something happens C, right? And then you have the, the D, and then you have E, F, G. But if you go backwards from G and you essentially come from the two ends, oop, you come from the two ends, they point to the middle. So what you see is a parallel structure. You see things on one end happening that parallel or mirror things on the other end. Sometimes they're exactly the same, just a different way. Sometimes they're opposites. But the point is you can see a direct parallel. And actually, I've seen somebody do the whole Bible this way, as well as a number of books this way. And the point being is um, in the book of Jonah, there's a chiastic structure that points to when he goes down into the pit of soul, and then he comes back three days later. In a sense, he's yes. resurrected, okay, and a mighty hallelujah, and he gives thanks to the Lord, and then he goes to perform what he's been asked to been told to perform, to Nineveh, okay? Yeah. So the point was, essentially, he died for his sin, and then he God didn't forsake him, uh, and, and, and he comes back. And he comes back up, and he's basically given his life back. Because when you go down where he went, you're dead. So he gets his life back, and then he goes and performs his, his action. That's a whole other story, but the point of it is um, there's a chiastic structure here, and it has to happens a lot uh, that it points to these uh, these banquets. Okay, so what happens yeah. at these banquets? All right, so – uh, let me just do a quick highlight rundown of the story. We can't go through every chapter in detail. So no, right away in, the, in, in book one, the queen, the queen is deposed. So that's the first chapter. Vashti's 
out of the picture. Second chapter, Esther is chosen. Third chapter, mm -hmm. we hear about Haman's conspiracy. Fourth chapter, we hear about Esther's decision and her plan, okay? And then you have Esther's bold request, okay? Which yeah. is right there at the center and honor of Mordechai. Then you have Haman's end. Then you have the proclamation by King Ashwaris to, to help the Jews. You have in nine, the victory of the Jews, and you have 10, Mordechai's promotion. So Haman was the number two. Mordechai ends up becoming the big shot and, and, and the end of the story. So it's a real turn of events, okay? Now, in order for this to happen, there's all these coincidences, and they happen in these various chapters. First of all, Vashti has to refuse the king. So here's this woman that we know. Her name means beautiful and drinking, and she won't go to a party where they're drinking to show off her beauty, okay? And what yes. is she? She's this uber feminist, okay? All of a sudden, she's too good for, for this, okay? By the way, there's some people that say she was asked to dance nude. There's nothing in the book that says anything about that. She was asked to wear her royal crown, you know, that she was the queen, yes, but she was not, not told to dance nude. That's just craziness. But Vashti refuses the king. What are the odds of that? Vashti is deposed. What are the odds of the queen being kicked out? That's not too common. The next, you have to have a Jewish girl who ascends to the Persian throne. She hides her identity. What, is he, what do you know about her? You, you meet the girl. You might say, so tell me a little bit about yourself, Esther. Oh, not even Esther. Not even, my name's Hadassah. I come from a Jewish family. Uh, we were, you know, you know, none of that. No, she's not even, she, just, she hides her identity, and she has to win a beauty contest. What are the odds that Mordecai would be like this great big shot in the, in the king's court, so to speak, and would have this girl that's his, uh, that's his race as his daughter that's really his cousin? Uh, that would, what were the odds of that, okay? Uh, Mordecai's deed, okay, so Mordecai, uh, Esther hears of a plot to kill the king, to kill, to kill Hashuerus, tells Mordecai, okay, or maybe it's the other way around. Um, and, and no, t Mordecai hears oh, about Mordecai it. Mordecai saves, it. He saves, he saves the king. It's written, yeah. exactly, it's written about in Chronicles. And mm -hmm. these guys, you know, I think it's uh, two, uh, two guys that end up haven't haven't getting executed because of this okay so it's recorded his deed is recorded the king knows it's recorded but he forgets it okay so he doesn't know that mordecai is a good guy okay remember that um and you get this puzzling promotion of this arrogant guy named haman okay so Who wants Haman's to be we have to make oh, wants to be the Haman king. What is what's the what does the Antichrist want? Wants to be king, right? Want, okay, wants wants, wants all the power. Yep. Yep. The random chance of casting lots up on the thirteenth of Adar. The confrontation between uh between Mordechai and Esther is kind of interesting because Esther at first is like, you want me to go over to the king's you know, I'll say go to go visit him in his room and tell him uh, about this plot. Okay. And she's like, wait a second. He hasn't called for me. Now think about the imagery there. You don't go to see God, right? You don't walk in on God. And, and so it's, if you go in, if you just walk into the Holy of Holies, you know, we know stories in the Bible about this, right? You know, burning incense or whatever, making the sacrifices the wrong way. You don't walk in there. Okay. So you don't go into the King uninvited. Okay. And she goes and does it. And he sees her. He he he, hands, he lets her touch his his scepter. I guess that means somehow she's allowed in. So there's the uncertainty of the king going to receive Esther, but he does. Okay, what are the chances that King Hashuerus is going to have insomnia? He has insomnia. Okay, insomnia in the story. This is what the king has. He can't sleep. So what does he do? He calls his eunuchs over to say. Bring me this book. They bring him Chronicles. He opens the page where the story, pardon me, my dog is here. I'll let my dog say hello. That's Come okay. on up here, oh. Casper. Oh, this he's is, got adorable this is, dog. This is my, 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 my poodle, Casper. Okay. Come on, buddy. Uh, he was, they were, he was named when I, when I, Here's, when I got oh, well, oh okay. my goodness. Look at Toby. Toby is upside down. In the dog bed. Where is he? He's right there. <laughs> I see it. I see it. There and this is, is my other boy, Benji. Benji. This is the, life now. Th this is Benjamin. Come here, Benji. 
Come on up, Benjamin. Oh, right. Benji's adorable too. I've met them both. Uh, 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 well, we can't get it. Come on, Benji. Go oh, scram, Casper. Come here, Benjamin. All right, come on up. <laughs> this is this is Benji. Uh, Benji, oh, get a minute. Benji, come here. Oh, there he is. He's he's a service dog. He's yep. a he's a ninety pound mush. <laughs> they both are. Okay, go on, scram, scram. We love magic animals word. here at Ark of Grace, but Toby is living his best life now, right there. Yeah, certainly has a relaxed <laughs> attitude. So you, now you have the selection of Mordecai uh, for the court to read the book of which Mordecai performed this act of saving the king. This, okay, this very now, brave guess, act of saving the king's life. Right. So Haman, who cannot stand, hates, hates Mordecai with a passion because Mordecai won't bow down to him. You know, he wants to be the king. And he won't bow down. He won't worship this king would be, right? And he wants to kill him and all the Jews because of it. So he cooks this plot. His wife says, hang him, right? And he cooks this plot, and he goes to, to tell the king right after this. King hears he's in his court. What's he here? Bring him in. Now, he's just read about Mordecai saving his life. Just read it. What are the chances? And what is, Haman what is Haman about come to in? walk in and, and tell him he wants to kill him. Right. Before he has a chance, the king asks Haman, what should I do for a man who has, you know, has done this great thing? How should I honor him? Yeah. Now, Haman's, in Haman's mind, who else could he be talking about? He must be talking about me. He's playing to his ego. He must be talking about me. Well, he should be given the royal scepter, the royal crown, the signet ring, yeah. a royal you know, the royal robes, the royal horse. He should be paraded through the town like he's the king. Okay, that's what he, he he says. That's what you should do. He tells the king and answer his question, and the king says, "Great, do it for Mordechai." I know that was the Whoa. whole like that's when the story begins to turn is when the there's king a goes, term. Do there, this for Mordecai. Now Haman's in trouble. There's a big turn. Okay, this is the big but turn of events. People are booing Haman in the chat. By the way, they're doing like it. Thank you, thank you. This. You know, I I, I in went. The temple, <laughs> Explain this, Jonah, to them that in the well, temple. I did I, at a church. I yeah. So I, I actually uh, went and did a little teaching for this church for uh, uh, fifth and sixth graders. They had me come in and t talk for a few minutes about it, and I explained to them how when we would read his name, because there's you we're commanded to remember the story twice. Uh, on the era of Eve, and, and then the next morning to tell the story of Purim, and when they would ever they would say the name. People would make big noise and, and, and ground out his name. That's actually a later tradition. But in any event, um, yes. uh, so I was telling the kids about this, and they instantly fell in love with bang kids. What kids don't like banging the table? They banged so hard the clock fell off the wall. That was crazy. But anyway, um, so so – you have this incredible turn of events right here, and Haman is like so distressed. He's so ups he's so verklempt. He's so upset. He goes back to his to Zeresh, and she's the one that says, "Well, you know, if these are Jews, you're toast." So, you know, at this point, um, you know, uh, Queen uh, now has this request. What does she want? Now, of course, um, he knows about this banquet. Okay, he, he Haman is, is and, and then she requests a banquet. Okay, with, with a dinner with Haman and the king. Okay, well, so the after she fasts for three days, right? So let's back up for a uh, minute. I, I think so. Guy, they, they find out what happens that the, the uh, Haman convinces the king to send this decree out to all the provinces that the Jews are to be totally destroyed on this day. So Mordecai sends word to Esther and says to her, do not think you will escape this if this comes right. upon us, but perhaps and you have been raised up for such a time as this. That's exactly right. It's very important because Esther realizes that, that she has a role, that, 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 that yes. there, there, there are divine things. And so it's like some people say, well, what if Pilate hadn't crucified Jesus? Well, in some other way, something would have happened, right? So when, when, you know, God's making things happen. And so Mordecai is like, look, he's totally, Mordecai is, look, do it or don't do it. Either way, this is going to happen, but this is your chance. Yep. This is your, maybe this is what you're here for. And she, she comes, she comes to that conclusion too. Okay. And so, um, 
So she goes and she says, um, you know, she asks for a banquet. So I really think it's clever. She's brilliant. Uh, woman a brilliant woman and not just not just Ben's not just food. pretty she's smart she says let's have a banquet you view me and you him and me okay so what is that was her request he he, he get, grants her any request that she wants she wants a banquet okay and 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 so he says okay let's have a banquet and then um the banquet comes Haman's there right and what does he what does she she says okay anything you want half my kid whatever it is right what does she ask for another banquet which is really kind of strange but she's setting him up okay and what she set up is this whole turn of events that's going to happen where where uh mordechai Haman, excuse me king hashuerus realizes that mordechai saved his life and now Haman wants to have him killed so basically what happens is Haman's building this gallows now here's the symbology i think is important he says build uh he, he's going to hang Haman on a, on a gallows, which is technically the word is tree. Okay. Tree. It's not a gallows. Hung in the traditional on sense. a tree. Yeah. Hung on a tree. Whoa, uh -huh. that, what does that sound familiar? And by the way, the way it's supposedly mm -hmm. done in the, it's not a noose. It's an impaling. So what they would do, I don't want to describe it, but it was a, a very gruesome because Aside from the pulling the legs down and the horrible pain of the of the of the tree going the spear going up your body coming out at your neck, the person would actually live for quite a period of time, and it was an excruciating, humiliating death, an excruciating and humiliating death on public display. Gee, does that sound a little familiar, right? And that's what was planned for Haman. Excuse me, for Mordecai, for Mordecai. the Jew. That was what was planned for Mordechai the Jew. But things are turned around, okay? And what happens is King Ahasuerus decides to hang Haman and his ten sons, hang his ten, kills, kills, kills them on the gallows. So there's ten sons that are going to get hung in these gallows. What does that matter? Okay, so in the ten, in the in the in the book here, okay, what's I. I Hopefully I have this. I'm not sure if I do. But in this chapter in the book, we're going to talk now about Haman as Amalek. Okay? So we know, I believe this book is all about Esh, uh, Esau. Okay? It's all about Amalek. So who is Haman? Okay. He's a descendant. He's a Haggai. Of He's a descendant of, of, of Haggai, uh, 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 the king that... The king that um, Saul brought back. So you have Saul's disobedience. Mm -hmm. Saul's disobedience. He was supposed to kill him, not bring the animals back, right? Loses his king, his anointing, right? We're going to get David, right, as a result of this. But but loses his anointing, and this doesn't turn out too well for Saul, as we know. But um, uh, Haman is a descendant. So if, if Saul was obedient... There wouldn't be the lineage of Haman. That's okay? Right. So that's number one, and he's the lineage of Amalek. Number two is um, you have Mordecai. Who's Mordecai a descendant of? Well, you know in, this, in the story of David, um, after uh, Beersheba and there's Shimei, and they're 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 calling him names and throwing stones at him, and they're saying, "David, you know, kill him." And David says, uh, "You know, no." And maybe maybe God wants it this way, and maybe my covenant will be restored someday. Remember that yes. in the, in the story with Shimei yes. and David, Shimei would have been killed, except for what the grace of King David. Mm -hmm. The grace of King David. Is is he he had mercy on Shimei, and Mordecai is a descendant of Shimei. He's his, he's mm -hmm. direct descendant. So you have the the grace of David provides for Mordecai to defeat the Antichrist of Haman, a descendant of the Amaleks. Is that mm -hmm. is, isn't that a beautiful? Parallel yeah. kind of concept there. Okay, so um, 
just to be clear, the, this Purim is not a Moedim. It's not one of the feasts. Okay, you have the Passover, you have unleavened bread, you have first fruits, you have Shavuot, um, you have uh, Yom Teruah, uh, uh, trumpets, you have uh, Yom Kippur, uh, you have Sukkot. Okay, now what's um, what's interesting is um, Sukkot. If, you, if in case you didn't know, back to Hanukkah, when the Jews restored and rededicated, Hanukkah means dedication. Okay, when they rededicated the temple and they celebrated for you know we know the eight eight days, right? Eight nights or whatever. You have the candles, right? You have the Hanukkah with the Shamas, the servant candle in the middle, and you have the, the you know, nine candles all together. Well, Sukkot was the holiday they celebrated in the temple in Hanukkah. It's not, they didn't celebrate Hanukkah. They celebrated Sukkot. It was the holiday they missed. Sukkot yes. uh, is the is the is the is the, sh the building there, uh, the hut. But yes. they celebrated Sukkot, Feast of Tabernacle, right? They celebrated that in Hanukkah. Now I tell you that because Sukkot is going to matter in just a moment. All right. So each of those holidays has its kind of, um, you know, what God speaks of. Whereas with Purim and Hanukkah, they're more what God did. Okay, they're the national they're national days in Israel. Now, um, so you have the story of of Amalek from the first mention of Amalek, first letter to mention Amalek, to the last letter of mention Amalek in the story of Esau and Jacob and so forth. Okay, um, there are twelve thousand one hundred and ten letters. Why does that matter? The Book of Esther is twelve thousand one hundred and ten letters. Exact wow. same number of letters on the, on where Amalek is in the Bible from beginning to end. Same number of letters beginning to end in the, in the story of of Esther in Exodus. And this is this what I'm going to tell you now. These verses I think are really critical. Um, we, these are really critical uh, to understanding. I think Purim, Exodus 17, 12, 13. But Moses's hands were heavy when they took. When the, then they took a stone and put it under, under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, okay, one on one like side, it. one on the other. Thus his hands yep, like, were steady, right, like a cross, right, until the sun set. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, what you're what you're holding your hands up like this right now? That is the fifth letter yep. in the in the in the Hebrew alphabet. That is the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Chai. The symbol of it is that in the ancient symbol mm -hmm. of it. If I were to bring up like the cross as the last letter, the twenty-second letter, the number five, five find favor. Yeah. Five is uh, is behold. It's its symbol uh, means behold. Okay, so um, now thus his hands were steady until the sun set. Now the word steady okay. in this verse is amuna. Okay, which is the basic root. For the word it's where the word amen comes from now you probably have taught on the meaning of the word amen it's often misunderstood okay and then 13 next verse and joshua discomfited amalek and his people with the edge of the sword so this is the first battle when they enter the pro this is the first battle uh, uh with with the people with with moses the first battle is amalek these people that were biting at their heels the whole way okay and there's their first Amalek, okay, with a men. Samuel, 1 Samuel 15, okay, um, or uh, maybe it's maybe it's 5, okay, um, or uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 2, 3, 5. Thus the lords of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way, I was just saying, when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek. And uh, this is Samuel talking to Saul. And smite, mm -hmm. go yeah. and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and women, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. And Saul came to the city of Amalek and lay in wait in the valley. So here you have, again, killed Amalek, right? Numbers 2420. Yes. When he looked on Amalek, uh, he took up his parable and said, Amalek, 
uh, was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. So this is Numbers 20. So Amalek is sort of this constant, you know, and they're, they're around today yeah. in Iran, okay? Okay, we're, we'll get, to, hopefully we get to that. The point being Esther's is- Esther's tomb, by the way, for people who don't know, is in Iran. Esther's tomb, where she's buried, is in Iran to this okay. day. And, and yeah, yes, and now, um, Deuteronomy 15, 25, 17, 19, remember what Amalek did to you, by the way, when you were coming out of Egypt. Therefore, it shall be when the Lord your God has given you rest from all your enemies about round about in the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess as an inheritance. You shall blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, and you shall not forget it. Okay, Samuel, 1 Samuel 15. Um, did I do that one already? Maybe I did. I don't know. But again, uh, Saul came to see. Okay. So um, 1 Samuel 28, 15, because you obeyed not the voice of the Lord, nor executed his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore, has Yahweh done these, done this thing unto you this day? Saul's, uh, you know, going to get it. After these events, this is Esther chapter 3. After these events, King Xerxes honored Haman, son of Amadai, the Agai. In other words, he elevated him to a position. So Haman is in the story. I'm back to the story. Haman, this Amalek, there, there he is, uh, Agagite, king, the, the descendant, right? So there is this Haman, this Antichrist, this Amalek, is getting this big promotion. Okay? So yes. you have um, you have all these stories. I'm going to skip over and skip over uh, these stories. You have all these stories about uh, remembering to forget. Amalek, okay, and the per on Shabbat before Purim, before the holiday, which is we know thirteenth of Adar is the is the is the, is the turn, and the fourteenth is the celebration. We're gonna we're gonna we're not gonna celebrate the va the battle. We're gonna celebrate the victory. The Jew the Jews. Uh, mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons that um, I think the, the 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 given for why uh, the Book of Maccabees is taught a little weirder than it really was because they didn't want to promote war and killing. Which is really what the Maccabees was about was about a battle. They promoted the oil and the miracle, even though the miracle didn't quite happen the way it's described in the book. Um, but what they did celebrate was Sukkot. Okay, so um, what is uh, what we have to now do is we're going to get to a close here with a key point about Amalek. Okay, so in the book uh, they read the ten sons. Uh, I, I I had this printed out. I can't believe I don't see it right now. I but, have the uh, I, sons' names. You want them? Um, no, no, that's okay. I wanted to show you how it looks because that's what's important. Uh, what they, when they read them in the in the in the temple, uh, the rabbi will read. They have to read the book standing up. When the rabbi will read the book, uh, he reads it standing up. And when he reads the ten names, which you're supposed to do, again, you're remembering to forget, which is kind of a, a kind of an oxymoron, right? Um, why don't you just forget it? <laughs> but uh, but you you want to remember to forget, so they read the ten names as one solid word, like instead of like reading Bob, uh, you know Kim, Nancy, David, it'd be Bob, Kim, David, Nancy. It's like almost like it's not saying the name in a way, but when it's printed in the story, in, and you have to see it in the Hebrew, it won't show up in the English. Um, there's letters that are different sizes. Okay, there's three that are small and one that are big. Okay, and if you take the gematria on those letters, um, one is the letter six, means the number six. And if you take six as a, as a millennium, okay, because it's a bigger letter than the others, if you take it as a millennium, that would be the five thousands. In other words, like, you know, first century would be... 20, 30, right? You know, so so it's like the, the 19th century would be the 1800s. So the sixth millennium is the 5,000s, all right? And then the other letters, which are smaller, um, uh, equal, uh, are, are the numbers that, that say 5700, and I'm going to say 5707. If I had my sheet, my notes here, I wouldn't get this wrong. But it's, um, it's essentially the, a date. The sun's... The, the, the ten sons that are hung, that are listed in the in the in the in the book of Esther, 
there's a date in gematria uh, by virtue of taking the numeric equivalent of each of the letters that's sized differently. There's no other explanation for why those letters are a different size than all the other letters or why on this page, it's only, usually Hebrew has a, 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 a book has just like a lot of Hebrew. These, this is the only thing on the page, so you can't get it, possibly get it wrong. Okay? And when they read the Ten Sons, the rabbi reads it as one whole name. You wouldn't say 5,700. Oh, oh, seven. You'd say 5707 or whatever the day, right? You read it as one whole name. And the little letters and the big letters add up to a date. So what's the thing about this date? It's the date is the Gregorian equivalent to 1946. Why wow. does that matter? Because in 1946 was the Nuremberg trials. 1946 was the Nuremberg trials. And on the 21st of Tishri, 5707, there I had the date right, October 16th, 1946, was Hoshana Rabbah, the last day of Sukkot. That is the holiest day, and that's supposedly the day of judgment. That is the day um, when um, the Messiah might come, maybe, or the world is judged. Okay. Point being is that's a very key date. Hashanah Rabbah is a very, very, very important date. In it's the, it's even sort of it's the last day of Sukkot, or it's its own date. I'm not sure which. <clears throat> but what happens on that date? Okay, I'm going to read you something. This is a when they there was a person that was sentenced on this. Uh, uh, they read a sentence. Um, th this is the description of the sentence that was read for a man named Julius Stryker. Who was Julius Stryker? Julius Stryker had a newspaper. Uh, that's a cover of this newspaper. OK, um, Julius Stryker. And this is what they wrote when they sentenced him. For his 25 years of speaking, writing, and preaching hatred of the Jews. Who was preaching hatred of the Jews? Haman. Stryker was widely known as, this is quote, Jew Bader number one. Jew Bader number one. So they, they, the Nuremberg trials said this is the number one guy who promoted anti-Semitism. Okay, in his speeches and articles, week after week, that's some people say, how could the how could the Germans have done this? How could they? Because week after week they were given lies. Satan prosecutes with lies, deception. They 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 were led to believe the Jews were not even human beings. Okay, like Pharaoh. All right. Week after week, month after month, he infected the German mind with the virus of anti-Semitism and incited the German people to active persecution. Stryker's incitement to murder and extermination at the time when Jews in the East were being killed under the most horrible conditions clearly constitutes persecution on political and racial grounds in connection with war crimes as defined by Chap the Char Charter and constitutes a crime against humanity. So this man was convicted for a crime against humanity. Okay. Yes, so he was. he was found guilty, and he was to hang on the last day of Sukkot, Hoshana Rabbah. But there's more. Okay, there were eleven people that were going to be hung. But wait a second, Haman was t in the in the Bible in the in the Book of Esther. There's ten. Here, there's eleven. There was eleven people going to be hung, including Reichmarkel Goering, Goring or Goering, obviously a really bad guy. He was one of the 11 war criminals that was to be hung on the 16th. Oh, but turn of events, chance, Goering takes a potassium cyanide tablet a few hours before his scheduled extermination, leaving 10. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the date, on Hoshana Rabbah, 10 men go to the gallows. And in the book of Esther, um, I don't know if I have it here, but in the book of Esther, Gosh, I wish I had it. But in the book of Esther, um, the king, they go to the king and they tell King Hashuerus that they've killed 500 men, you know, against the yes. Hades, They've killed 500. This is the uh, book of Esther, chapter 9, verse 11. Okay, and the 10 sons of Haman. It says it right there. They killed, they exterminated, 
Haman, uh, the, the 500 men and the 10 sons of Haman. And what does Queen yeah. Esther ask for? Right after that, immediately after she's told that the 10 sons are dead, do you have it in front of you? Read what Esther says. If you have it and in front of you. And she says, uh, chapter 9, verse 12. And the king said unto Esther the queen, the Jews have slain and destroyed 500 men in Shushan, the palace, and the 10 sons of Haman. What have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? Now what is thy petition, and it shall be granted thee? Or what is thy request further, and it shall be done? Then Esther said, verse 13, if it pleases the king, let it be granted to the Jews, which are in Shushan, to do tomorrow also according unto this day's decree, and let Haman's 10 sons be hanged upon the gallows so what does she ask for tomorrow and we know in prophecy terms tomorrow could be tomorrow could be next year could be could be 5707 yeah. so her her wish is for the amalek like people to be hung on a gallows and in the year that the names equal the 10 people go to the gallows oh it gets better this is the icing on the cake and we could keep going, but we're going to end it with this last one. What are the last words of Jew Bader number, word, number one? Jew Bader number one, when he's hung, his last words are, Now I go to God, which God, of course, Purim Festival 1946 goes now to God. Julius Stryker doesn't mention Sukkot. He mentions... No. Purim Festival, 1946. Mm -hmm. He mentions the ten people going to the gallows. He or he relates his going to the gallows. Mm -hmm. Now, something to notice here: Iran in 1935 was Persia. It declared yes. its um, independence and it renamed itself Iran. Iran comes from Iran. Germany's Iran. Hitler, okay. same Aryan. Okay, Persia, wow. Haman, Aryan, master race. You have a final solution with with uh, with Haman that was turned around, and you have a final solution in the in the Ter Tehran times. Just one wrong move, and it's a, this is Tehran times. This is in Iran. This is this is December of last year. And this little map that they picture in their newspaper are all the places where they have missiles, ballistic missiles pointed. This is them publicizing. Wow. Yeah. This is every dot is a is a target for a ballistic missile in this tiny little Israel. Okay, that's the final solution of Haman. Okay, now um, we all know uh, about other relationships between uh, the Temple of Zeus. Pergamon and that being in Berlin. Yes, Hitler at the Ber had his Berlin. Stage, yes, Hitler had his stage designed after that throne, which is known as the um the throne of Zeus, otherwise known as the altar of Satan. So when Hitler gave that famous speech, he had that stage designed after that throne or altar that was in Pergamon. Now, I'll, I'll ask you a question, folks, that are still here and listening. Okay. We all know it with, with Ezekiel, Gog, Magog, um, we, we, we tend to think that uh, uh, Rush and Magog and Russia are related. And so everybody gets very anxious with Ukraine, okay, and what's going on there. And uh, I don't know if you know the name Durbin, but I would suggest that you look into some of, uh, uh, of Putin's uh, uh, ideology that he's following it's very much like hitler it's a master race it's 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 their it's russian's destiny to bring their nation together okay he's on a divine he thinks he's on a divine mission okay you go you go look up durbin uh you you can look up other people that are advising him and what the roman church is talking about and what he what his, yeah because that runs what, so what, deep the issue of russia and ukraine runs so deep there's right. so now, much of course, to it. You know, I mean, so much Hasidism, Hasidism, the ultra-Orthodox, began in Ukraine. Uh, Chabad, which is probably the biggest movement of ultra-Orthodox Hasids, began in Ukraine. 
and the Holocaust began in Ukraine largely too, because the crematoriums and the death camps were not in full force and full steam when in Ukraine Hitler sent four death killing squads. And they didn't just take, they didn't put them on cars, railroad cars, they didn't put them in ghettos and then take them to railroad cars and bring them to Auschwitz and all the other death camps. They took them out of their houses, they shot them right there. 1.5 million. Fathom that, 1.5 million. And even after that, do you know that Ukraine has the third largest Jewish population in the world? Israel number yes, one, I America do, yes. number two, Ukraine, Ukraine number three. And population. what is happening? They're all leaving. And not only are they leaving when they go to Poland and whatever, and the Israeli planes are getting them out of there, but they're not just getting the Jews of Ukraine out of there. There are Jews all over Europe that are saying, with COVID and all the other craziness, now's my chance. Get me out of here. And they're saying, get me on these planes. I'm going to Israel too. You have this tremendous gathering of Jews back to Israel. Now, when you think of what could be the hook in Magog's jaw, I think it's oil and gas. Oil and gas. What could God, what did God put in this earth long before we started being modern, long before combustion engines? long before electric mm -hmm. lights, long before cars and how heating oil and airplanes, long before there were anybody walking the earth to speak of, oil and gas was put into the ground. God created this planet and we had oil and gas, okay? And here we are, This what God gave us this resource. Now, Russia depends heavily on oil and gas. 60% of German's gas supply comes from Russia, 30 plus percent or almost 40 percent comes from Europe. The battle in Ukraine is going to cause a dramatic shift where all these countries are not going to buy gas from Russia. OK, where are they going to get it from? Well, what was Ukraine planning to do last year, year before Ukraine was planning to build nuclear plants and there was talk of Ukraine attaching nuclear plants to Europe's grid. Ukraine was talking um, with Europe about being able to supply uh, your, uh, electricity through um, nuclear plants as a substitute. Well, you know that's not happening. The first thing Russia did was take a hold of all the nuclear plants. Okay, so where's the other option? Where are they gonna get gas? Well, right before Biden was president, there was a big push because in 2008 and 9, or, or 9 and 10, three, three fines, three huge fines in 2000s, Israel found more gas than anybody can imagine. It's been here for how long? And in 2000, right now, end of times, you might say, they find this gas. What a miracle. What a coincidence. There are no coincidences. And what are they planning? They're planning to build the largest sub-Mediterranean um, oil pipeline, gas pipeline to feed Europe. Who isn't going to like that one? If that isn't enough to get Magog down to Israel, I think it is. I it think that's the hook. Could be. You and know, right as soon as Biden became president, oil. Biden killed the the uh, the deal with Israel, Keystone. and yep. he no, it's Keystone. He killed the plans to build the pipeline. Yep from Israel, and mm -hmm. he squashed the waivers that Trump put into place for the Nordstrom II. He reversed what was going on, but now Europe, because of Ukraine, is going to make it happen all again. They're going to have to. So interestingly enough, what could start this? Germany could announce it's buying gas from Israel. Germany announces it. You know, we would think, oh, that's such a good thing. Oh, that's wonderful. You want to know something? That's all they have to do is Germany say it's going to buy gas from Israel. That's going to be the hook that brings Magog down to Israel. Isn't it interesting that the Aryan nation, the Aryan, the place that was, was the, the Ayatollahs and the Persians and Iran were all for Germany. I could give you great messages on that one. So isn't it interesting that Germany is in a position, they're the largest buyer of Russian gas. What if they become the large, want to be the largest buyer of Israel gas? What's Russia going to do about that? 
I'm you gonna know, leave you that question. There will be some we're, we're hit, we've hit an hour and a half now. We're done. So we're done. we've given an hour and a half of amazing information uh to the people watching. Some people have said it's gonna be fought over oil and gas. Others have proposed a theory that there are very large food shortages beginning to happen in the world, and China is buying up a lot of farmland and Israel produces, I think, about 500 times more than it needs. It produces a ridiculous amount extra of food than it really needs. And putting a hook in the jaw. The fig tree is is blooming big time. So it could be. So these are the two theories that have been proposed, just so everybody knows out there. But what I'm going to ask you to do, Jonah, is um, start doing your research on Passover and we will do a deep dive into Passover and we're going to do a Passover Seder on here, you know, and since Chris can't lead it, if you want to lead it, because a male truly is supposed to lead the Seder. I only do well, it for my husband's sake because he can't. Well, I, I, That's a great honor. I can't say yes, because I might have other Seder requirements for myself with plans with my friends in the Jewish well, we'll community. Well, we'll do it a night you're but, free. It's seven I, nights Passover. We'll figure something out. I'll certainly I'll certainly okay. visit you for Passover somehow. I want to uh, say thank okay. you very much, uh, Toda Raba, for, to you, to your wonderful audience. I haven't been reading the chat, I'm sorry to say. I, I hope I didn't upset anybody. Sometimes I say things that people get annoyed at. I don't know if you've had to watch the chat because um, I get misunderstood sometimes, and I'm sorry about that. I, I I want you to know I don't I don't have a ministry I'm not a I'm, I'm not a pastor I'm just a businessman who loves the Bible and the Word and who found Yeshua at 60 years old almost um, <laughs> and uh, and and that's all I am I'm I I, I don't want you to think that I'm some expert I get a lot of my research a lot of material uh, from others and that's very common in the, in, in 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 you know in this in this business uh, so I don't want to take credit for this I didn't invent this stuff. I didn't find I didn't find all this stuff on my own, so I don't want you to think I'm some, you know, you know, crazy sadiq or something. Uh, but I will say this um, in closing: there were more superheroes costumes people dressed up on Purim this year than there were people dressed up uh, for uh, for you know Esther and Mordechai, and uh, and so. Yeah. Um, the Jews, the Jews are, are looking for a superhero. They've always wanted a Messiah, and I think that would be something of an interesting topic one day, because uh, I think you'd find some interesting correlations between Jewish, between the comics and superheroes, and a longing that Jews have for a Messiah. Um, so I, I think it's uh, we're looking in the wrong place. We're looking in the wrong places, um, and it's, it's right true. there in front of us. And I know from if there's any Jewish people on this broadcast, um, one of the things that that, that uh, Satan wants us to believe, uh, and a, a lot of Jewish people will tell you, you're then you're not Jewish if you believe in Yeshua, you're not Jewish. But I, I don't yeah, think, I, and, and that you've right. convert that you've quote unquote converted. I'm still a Jew. There might be Jews that disagree with that, uh, but I've come to terms with the fact I am still a Jew. I'm just like a Jew who saw Jesus walking down the street. And said, I like what this guy's saying. I I I've seen him perform miracles. I, I think he's I think he's special. And then then catch witness of him resurrecting. If there's no resurrection, there's no Bible, there's no gospels. It's all That's about the true. resurrection. Okay. Um, you know, so so what if I can imagine uh living at a time like that, then I then I think if you can do that and, and say and understand what he has to say, uh then maybe you'll be able to come to terms with, with if you're Jewish, um, with with who he is. Also, he's all through the Bible as Yeshua. He's not in the Bible in, in the Old Testament as Jesus. He's in there as this Hebrew name as salvation, just like the word Hanukkah is throughout the Bible as the word dedication. Um, and so, I would suggest for you folks that might be um, trying to accept Yeshua as your Savior, uh, you know, Amen. keep listening to your pastors. Uh, keep praying on it, um, and I wish you, uh, you know, I, I wish you all the best in that journey. It's these are these are important times, and I think mm-hmm. um, if you're trying to understand what's going on in the world, I personally don't feel you'll figure it out in the natural because what's happening is just That's so right. crazy, Amen. so bizarre, so unexplainable. 
that you have to come to some conclusion. If you just like you can come to the conclusion that there's a design, a master designer of this earth, you know, of the universe, that there had to be a creator. I think even I think like that, you can come to the conclusion today that th that these are times that are hard to explain as well in any other way other than the supernatural. So uh, as somebody just said, best time to be alive. We're seeing more prophecy than Amen. all the others, and, and we're really lucky that way. So stay calm. Amen. Don't be fearful, um, you know, and, and read read the Psalms, read Proverbs. Um, one of the best places to go if the world's got you down is pick up your Bible and start reading it. The world's Amen. got you down and the world's got you stressed. Open up your Bible. That's all That's I'll, right. I'll, I'll leave you with. Yep, I have Psalms in the background right there. It says, he restores my soul. Psalm 23, he restores my soul. Good reminder. So Thanks those are very good words of wisdom, Jonah, for us to end with, is that. So thank you. I thank you for coming on. I thank you for teaching everyone. Um, everyone found it fascinating. So many people on the chat found it fascinating. It is fascinating. So if you start look, look. looking into... Um, as we approach Passover, if you start looking into that for us, and then we'll do another deep dive for everybody. In case people were wondering what's around my neck, this is Magan David, the shield of da the shield, Magan and shield. The shield of David, of course, was God. God's our shield, right? And this is not a mezuzah. This is a DNA strand. What's the first commandment that God gave us? After he created us, the first commandment, be fruitful and multiply. How are you going to do that? DNA, DNA has one, two jobs to do. DNA, two jobs, survive, which is to say you have to prosper. If you don't, if you don't get food, energy, money, whatever, land, a spouse, if you don't prosper, you know, you're not going to be able to do the second thing a gene does, which is multiply. A gene has to replicate. Be fruitful and multiply. Right from the very beginning, when God spoke the first commandment, when he spoke his word, when he when he uttered his word, he gave us also a, a, the means in inside us, a means to be fruitful and multiply. Because that's how we multiply ourselves. That's right. It is it is uh, it replicates. Yes. You think about the idea of, of conception and, uh, you know, a, a sperm and an egg come together. Life is created. All right. Love multiplies. God bless everyone. Amen. God bless you, Jonah. Talk soon. Baruch Hashem. Okay, everyone, and that concludes uh, tonight's broadcast. I will tell you something very interesting I found in the book of Esther. Esther chapter 9, verse 11. So 9, 11. On that day, the number of those that were slain in Shushan, the palace, was brought before the king. So Esther 9, 11 talks about a large number of people being slain. What happened... September 2001 on 9-11. A large number of people were slain. See, it repeats itself over time. Esther 9-11. 9-11 talks about a, a large amount of people being slain, being brought before the king. On September 11th, 9-11, Twin Towers, a large number of people were slain. That then had to be brought before leadership. There goes Toby. So I found that interesting as well. And I wanted to uh, to share that with you because it's so interesting how those towers came down on 9-11 and how such in Esther 9-11, a large number of people fell. Uh, so I just found that parallel interesting. Thought I would share. We will have Jonah back on to do a deep dive into Passover. Now, why do I do this? Why? Because a lot of the Old Testament is overlooked. The Old Testament is the foundation for the New Testament. You ain't going to get any New Testament if you don't first go through the Old Testament. You understand the New Testament better. 
and what is going on when you read the Old Testament, look into it and see the events that led up to the birth of Jesus, to his ministry, to him going to Calvary, to the birth of the early church. We understand, to Revelation. You understand Revelation better when you read the Old Testament. It is the foundation. It cannot be waved away. It cannot be waved off. We cannot hear from a pastoral leadership that we don't need the Old Testament because we're living in the New Testament. But the Old Testament is the foundation. And you understand the New Testament far better when you understand the Old Testament and you begin to see how it was written and the Hebrew alphabet and the patterns and the timing and that it just begins to make more sense. And you begin to see the correlations then within the word. You need both. Both are in here together. You just don't have a New Testament in here. You have the New Testament and the Old Testament together for a reason. It's like a, it's like an intricately knit quilt. You need every piece to make that whole picture. So this is why we do this because the Jews have a piece and we have a piece. And when we come together, we, we see this amazing picture unfold and Jonah is saved. He has accepted Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ as his Lord and savior. So he's got a perspective where he's learning the New Testament, but he knows the Old Testament really well. And I know the New Testament, right? And I know the Old Testament some, but he knows the, the Old Testament from, from a true Hebraic perspective. So this is why I think we need teachings like this, because it helps us then see patterns biblically that help us understand what's going on today in the world. There is so much shift in movement in the world right now landscapes of entire nations are changing alliances of nations are going to change you're going to see nations suddenly oppose each other that were allies you're going to see nations turn their backs on other nations you're going to see south america turned upside down during this time i'm saying it now in jesus name you're going to see this happen the Lord told me last night, I perceive it to be the Lord. I wrote it down. There's going to be an earthquake in New York. Where in New York? I don't know. But there is going to be one that's moderate, a moderately sized earthquake in the state of New York, which is rare. D.C. is going to be shaken again. That is going to happen. And there's going to be an unheard of storm, unheard of in its capacity and how it forms and what it does that is going to form in the Gulf this year. That is coming too. So be in prayer. I'm going to be in prayer. The situation with Russia and Ukraine has so many twists and turns. Oh my goodness. The time between Purim and Passover is a time unlike any other time of so many twists and turns and surprises and unheard of events, historic events, events in the skies over nations. I mean, you're just going to see this incredible unfolding during Purim and Passover this year. And the tipping point, I believe, is going to occur and begin to completely tip during this time. I'm going to be in prayer about Passover. Fast and pray right now. Fast and pray because we need it right now with what is going on. You see, our, lie, our eyes truly right now should be on the Lord. Our ears should be listening for him. That is our duty as believers. Not to be involved in foolish, ridiculous, busybody sort of nonsense. That's not what we're called to do. We are called to help people understand the word. We are called to preach the gospel to the nations. We are called to be a witness. We are called to be salt and light. And our priority above our busybodiness, thinking this one did this and this did that, is Almighty God. His agenda his will to be fulfilled and carried out on this earth. That is our priority. And I'm going to be in prayer. I will tell you too, last night I had a dream. 
In that dream, a sketching, a color sketch of a lotus flower appeared. The lotus flower somehow is going to be at the center, I believe, of not only what's happening in this nation, but other nations. The lotus flower is somehow involved. So just pray into that as well. And um, keep the faith. We love you. Thank you for being patient with the internet. You're going to see me back and forth between both houses right now as we get this figured out. Uh, but thank you for being patient. If I do come on from here, because I don't have coverage uh, to stay with Chris, as long as you can hear me fine, that is what matters. If the picture is a little blurry, don't worry. Over the next month or so, it will be fixed and we will go back and forth to make sure we can continue to give you uh, these broadcasts and continue to do what the Lord truly wants us to do. So thank you all. God bless you. Keep the faith. And before we leave, I am just going to put a banner up here. I'm just looking for one. Oh, here we go. If you go to time to free, hold on. Oops, it went off. If you go to time to freeamerica.com and use the promo code grace, I believe you get percentage off your tickets for reawaken America. I did not ask for this code. Uh, it was basically given to me. Uh, they felt led to do this. So if you go to timefreeamerica.com, use promo code grace. I believe you get a percentage off when you buy your tickets for Reawaken America. Next stop is Oregon. Now, Oregon's going to be the um, the wild card here. Now, I'm from the Bronx, New York. So it's not nothing really surprises me, kind of, you know what I mean, in people's behavior. But pray for us in Oregon because Oregon, we're going into, I believe, a very blue state. So uh, just pray for us. And, and then we will be uh, in May after that, I believe, in South Carolina. And we're going to announce coming up, too. I believe I have a conference in June uh, at uh, with Mantle of Power Ministries uh, that is in New Jersey. And also we're making some announcements coming up of other places that we are going to be speaking. So uh, I try to space them out because I, I just with Chris cannot uh, constantly be traveling. I have to give him a break in between, even though he does love it. So, uh, but we will be making those announcements as well. And Wednesday morning, we'll make an announcement. I'm going to be on live uh, talking with a special guest about repentance. That's a big question uh, on the Reawaken America tour is repentance. What is repentance? Um, and what comes after it. So we will definitely make an announcement for that and uh, any other broadcast we do in between. So God bless everyone. Keep the faith. We love you. And we will see you soon. Have a wonderful rest of your evening.